campus, your favorite cousin, your favorite uncle, your favorite nephew, your favorite father, your favorite son, your best friend's best friend. It's me, Dr. Larry, and welcome to the Who For You, the YouTube channel. This is a safe space, a positive place in which we come together, we gather together, we discuss entertainment, we discuss history, we discuss news, we discuss life coaching, healthy living, all kinds of things at this channel. But the purpose of this channel is just to be a positive place, one of the best places you can be out here into these internet streets. To my lovely family, thank you so much for your continuous support, sharing these videos, leaving the comments, liking the videos, and do like the videos, that it helps with the YouTube algorithm and everything. So do like the videos if you're consuming them. They're great. Um, and so I love you guys. Thank you for that. Appreciate all of that. And to those of you who watch the videos, you can like the videos too. But what I also want you to do is join the family. There's no sense in watching the videos if you're not going to be part of this wonderful place. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Yes, the subscribe button and join the family. It might be here, it might be there, but wherever it is on this screen, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. To those of you who've never seen me before, I am Dr. Larry Smith. I am a certified life and a certified spiritual coach. And I just get on here from time to time and I chat it up with my family and we discuss something positive or something informational or just anything, really just something just gonna make your soul feel good. So you wanna know more about me? You wanna know more about my business? My business is Live For You Coaching. Uh, it is a life coaching firm where I help my clients deal with trauma. You can find more about that and me at www.liveforyoucoaching.com. That's www.liveforyoucoaching.com. And if you want to follow me on social media, if you want to see me out there where I post things daily, whether it's political, whether it's historical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's informational, educational, all this stuff, you can actually follow me on social media <laughs> at Dr. Larry Smith on both Instagram and on Facebook. It's Dr. Larry Smith on both Facebook and on Instagram. So I was thinking today, you guys, I'm trying to button my shirt because it keeps unbuttoning, but I wanted to keep it clean. <laughs> um, I was thinking, and I was really meditating on this one morning before I got up and something hit me and I said, I need to do a video about the higher power, right? Or about getting in contact or keeping a connection to the higher power. And I still, even as I'm recording this, don't fully know what the, to name it. I just know, I just want to talk about my higher power or the higher power of all of us. And I know from reading that Americans specifically, but I'm sure it's the case in other countries, are losing their faith. They're losing their faith in something bigger than them. And, and the numbers are proven. There have been polls taken. The Pew Research Center did a poll that showed that fewer than 50% of Americans for the first time in U.S. history, more, more, majority of Americans are non-religious, non, don't, don't, don't see themselves in any type of religious faith. And that is the first time. And, and, and I, I'm not one of the people who say that dooms destruction for the country because people aren't religious. I don't particularly consider myself religion and I actually literally academically and personally emotionally at some point in my life studied religion. Uh, my background is history and theology, history and theology and other social sciences. So at the end of the day, you know, but I don't consider myself religious. I'm more so a person who believes in spiritual connection and, and spiritual uh, uh, feeling. It's a spiritual thing for me more than it is a uh, rigid, uh, 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 rigid doctrinal base or whatever. I just connect to a spiritual sense for myself. But it's okay for others who do or don't. But I think that it's important to remember the higher power is not rooted in anything you can see. The higher power is not rooted in anything you can touch, taste, smell. Your five senses are not going to connect you to your higher power, no matter how much religion or friends or family or traditions teach you. You know, that's just not what that's about. You know, your higher power is beyond that. And it's the one thing that connects every person on the planet, not just to each other, but to the planet itself and to everything on the planet and everything in the cosmos and the universe beyond the planet. It's that thing that connects all of us that is beyond anything we can explain, anything we can think about, anything we can comprehend. It's beyond all of that. And I think 
the reason why people are less inclined to be religious or less inclined to claim a belief in God for some people is because they see it as something, it, it, they, they try to rationalize it through their physical, human understanding of what that is. You know, and, and I mean, if you think about it, for a lot of people, including myself for many years, God was a man in the sky with a crown and a saber, a scepter, and, and was just this dogmatic Zeus-like, King James-like, King Henry-like being entity into the sky. And then I grew a little bit, and when I grew a little bit, God was he and she. You know, God could be a man, God could be a woman, and I still was personalizing, but at least then I, I was trying to be a little more open. And as I got more and more and more connected with my spiritual faith, my spiritual walk, my personal beliefs, I let go of any personification of God. To me, God's not a man, God's not a woman. I couldn't explain what God was physically if I tried because there's no way my eyes in this physical form could actually see God. So for me, God is just all it is. So you might hear me say it, you might hear me say this thing. I, I'll describe it any other way than try to personify it for it to conform to what I believe a physical image of God is like. And more, more often than not, as humans, what we tend to do is we take our own things that we can see and we know exist and forms that we are able to understand and we try to superimpose those onto the higher power and I just don't do that because I, I and, and, and no shade if you do there's nothing wrong if you do at least you're acknowledging it so there's nothing wrong with that I, I don't wrong or right what people do it's just for me I have no need for that I have that doesn't serve me in any kind of capacity it doesn't give me anything to make God a man or to make God a woman or to make God both that doesn't give me anything my perception of God is deeper and bigger for me than that because I see God is able to be whatever God wants to be. Spirit can be whatever spirit wants to be. Spirit can come up and show up as you. And many of the world religions teach this exact same thing, just not in those exact words. For example, many, I, I use Christianity as an example because I grew up in Christian faiths and I know a lot of Christians and they're everywhere. And the majority of the religious faiths that are in the United States are Christian faiths. It is a Christian belief that Jesus came from being everything connected to God, connected to all, in the form of a man <laughs> to die for all of us, <laughs> right? So that is saying ultimately the same thing, that God can, spirit can be whatever spirit wants to be. It doesn't have to be a man in the sky. It doesn't have to be even a spirit being. Spirit can be that homeless man on the corner. And in many ways, the fact is, because we're all connected to spirit, spirit is that homeless man on the corner. <laughs> Just like spirit was that homeless man that we call Jesus, spirit can be that this homeless man in modern times. Spirit is you. Spirit is the wealthy millionaire. Spirit doesn't always have to have a good personality. Spirit can be somebody who seems like they're just wrong, you know, and they do everything wrong or they're not the nicest person, but they're being used to elevate the consciousness of the entire planet. That spirit being using any vessel that spirit wants because it's spirit. It's everything. It's the end all, be all, the alpha, the omega. It is everything. It was here long before time existed. It's going to be here after time ceased to exist. But at the end of the day, that that is what it is. <laughs> that is what it, capital I-T, is. And I think a lot of people, because they put so much humanity into spirit and because they put so much emphasis on the attributes of human personality and human feelings and human emotions imposed on the spirit that they get upset when their religious leaders or when their churches or when church members and friends and family who are connected to their relationship in religion do something that doesn't seem right to them it pushes them away from all of it because they've attached God, spirit, the infinite, the universe, the all power, all power, the higher power to that stuff. That has nothing to do with none of that. Humans have free will. So when we do stuff that's not good, whether it's bad or whether it's human atrocities or whether it's good things, we have those choices to have to do those things. And so guess who bears the responsibility for those choices? We do. <laughs> we do. You will never hear me in any time I talk, whether it's in on camera, whether it's with my friends. 
I don't refer to oh the devil is busy. No, humans doing bad things <laughs> are busy. Humans acting out of their out of their divinity, not out not acting in their divinity, but acting out away from their divinity. We do some not so good things to each other. Because I know people are, we have we have lived in these last two years in one of the probably one of the most pressing times in U.S. history. And I know that it has convinced many people that if, if God is, why is this, <laughs> right? And I know that. I can feel that energy. And I think that there are people who have just moved beyond and said, you know what? Because of this experience, I'm just going to do whatever because God isn't if all of this is. And at the end of the day, that's just not the case. You have to understand that we have the power to make this world that we share a beautiful place, a place without racism, a place without classism, a, a place without inequality, a place without bigotry, a place without gender bias, sexuality bias, people telling other people what to do, people imposing their way on people's lives. We can have a world that is free of all of that chaos, war and poverty and sickness, but it has to be a collective effort. I'll use the perfect example. War should never exist. And I know what people are thinking. War has existed since the dawn of humanity. Humans have always caused war. We had World War I, World War II, the Civil War, the War of 1812. We've had the Gulf War. We've had the War after 9-11, the Iraqi Freedom War. We have had war after war after war. Wars in England, wars in Asia, wars in Latin America, wars everywhere. But I'm here to tell you that none of those had to happen. <laughs> those were all human choices to cause that chaos and destruction. For example, last time I checked World War II, there was over 80 million people who had died. Of course, give or take some who died from sickness and other things, but a huge chunk of the world population died in World War II and World War I. Why? Because the choices that we made, that had nothing to do with a higher power, that was us acting in a low vibrational frequency and acting in that frequency against one another. And you can't help but have disaster and chaos and catastrophe and craziness and death and sickness and just wild stuff when you're operating at a vibration so far from the higher being. You're operating low. You know, Michelle Obama said something that I think a lot of people miss. When they go low, we go high. Because the frequency of high elevates the low. The low can't exist in the high. I always tell people all the time, you can have a dark room and put one light and it illuminates the space. Because darkness and light can't exist in the same space. Because light overpowers darkness. It inherently overpowers darkness. But as humans, many times we operate on that low vibration and we get comfortable on that low vibration. And through our egoic thinking, our egoic being, we operate on that lower vibration when all we need to do is turn the page and go high and go high what keeps me grounded but what also elevates my consciousness is my belief in a higher power not that i don't want to disappoint that higher power personally in my personal thought in my personal faith i don't think that higher power cares whether or not i'm disappointed or i'm disappointing or not what i don't think that higher power even interjects itself in my consciousness and psyche of what I'm doing. I have free range and free will to do those things. The higher power, if it's truly a higher power, it knows the end and the beginning of my story. <laughs> so nothing I do is surprising, shocking. Why get upset at something I do when you knew the story? It's like, it's like watching the movie The Titanic and the sink ships and you get so devastated that the sink ships as though you didn't know through history that the Titanic sinks. <laughs> you know the beginning and the ending of that story for it to upset you in any kind of way. And that is my thinking of the higher power. The higher power knows the beginning and the end of my story. Anything I do in the middle is a surprise because it's already known in the realm of the unknown. 
So I think people are losing their faith because of everything that's going around. They're attaching their higher being, their higher power, their God, their divine, their universal idea, the great idea, to the stuff that we do. <laughs> the stuff that we create. And yes, I know there are things that are out of our power that we do not create. Like, we don't create hurricanes. I mean, yes, global warming, and you know, that, that's up for some type of debate. But on the grand scheme of things, when it comes to natural disasters, when it comes to unfortunate events, when it comes to all these things, a lot of that stuff is out of our power. But here's the thing. It does not mean that it needs to be attributed to something greater than us. You know, unfortunate things happen. But the, the, the grand purpose of it is how do we perceive it and what does it move in us for the future? So like when I see things like poor children sick on, on TV or, or an unfortunate event happen with a natural disaster or something, I feel that. But I don't attribute that to God. I understand that there is a plan bigger than me. Whatever that plan is, I understand that there is a plan bigger than me, bigger than my concept, bigger than my ability to even understand on my conscious level. I get that. So when things like that happen, my first question is, what is the larger plan? What is trying to be conveyed to the world? And if it's a personal situation, what is it trying to convey to me? What do I need to know? Where do I need to grow? Where do I need to learn? With life, there's so many unknowns. So I don't question the unknowns. I don't try to encounter the unknowns. I don't try to discover the unknowns. I allow the unknowns to just exist and resonate in the realm around me. So many of us try to go to space. I have no interest in going to space because at the end of the day, I, first of all, I don't think that space is the only place that the higher power is. I think it's all over. But I feel like we can do better here, <laughs> make this a better planet. And I think that that's our purpose. That's why we were put here or we came here. Whatever our reason for being here was to make harmony of this existence on this planet with each other, with the planet itself and with everything on it. That is just my, my perception of reality. So I believe in working towards a better world amongst with my fellow humans and just making the earth and this existence better for all of us. That is the highest you can get connected to your highest power because your creative energies is about uplift. And to me, the energy of the higher power is about uplift. It's about positivity. It's about love. Unquestioned love. Unattached love. <laughs> Unmotivated love. It's just, it just is. It's like the air you breathe. There's no stipulation that you breathe air if you're alive. You just do it naturally. And that's the essence of all there is. It's just a free flowing of everything within everything, including you and me. So you don't have to be dogmatic. <laughs> you don't have to feel like, well, I don't go to church, so I'm a bad person. No, you're not. I don't read my Bible or my, my spiritual text, so I'm a bad person. No, you're not. <laughs> as long as you're acknowledging that all around you, all within you, and everyone around you, and everything around you is the essence of something beyond your comprehension on your physical level, then you're okay. Because that's going to motivate you to treat your fellow man with love. That's going to motivate you to try to, instead of build ways where you're different or to try to break apart your connection with others, you're going to try to find bridges so you can connect yourself to others. There are no borders with God. <laughs> there is no race with the higher power. There is no class division, social division, gender divisions. There ain't no divisions there. It's all one. We're all one. And the unifier is that higher power. So as long as you put your belief, your faith in that, then religion can't 
make you hurt. <laughs> People can't make you hurt because you're not attaching that greater reality, that greater essence to your physical, personal reality. So I submit going into 2022 that you don't live your life by the rules of your religion if it doesn't fit your soul or it doesn't soothe you or if it doesn't if it doesn't give you the service that you need from it then don't harbor onto it i submit that in 2022 you realize the essence of the higher power in everything and in everyone around you and that you acknowledge that when you talk to your fellow human you're talking to the higher power when you talk to someone in love you are supporting in them that higher power and i submit in 2022 that you recognize the higher power in yourself that you don't doubt your abilities that you don't doubt your your wisdom that you don't ignore your emotions but you're allowed to express and to develop and grow into that total being of light that you are that we all are Whatever you need to get to that place, whether it's coaching, you can go down to live for you coaching because I do work with my clients on, on connecting to their higher selves and, and living in that light. That's, a, that's part of my spiritual coaching practice. Whatever you need to do, reading books, watching videos, listening to music, meditating daily. Whatever you need to do to align yourself with something bigger than you, I submit in 2022 you do that because that's a gift to yourself. And while you're strengthening your connection with your higher power, your higher self, the higher being, you're going to make the world a better place because that's going to change you because it's going to make your internal place better. And that internal place is going to bubble over to the external world that we all live in. I look forward to engaging and interacting with all of you who had decided in 2022 to connect to your higher power. I love you. <laughs> love you, love you, love you. Love you all. Love you all with the good and the love of the higher power. And as I always say, subscribe. <laughs> but I will see you in the next video.